Hi, and welcome to part four of our inflammation series. Is it hazardous or is this all just hype? I'm Dr. Russell and I'm part of Frederick Natural Health Center in downtown Frederick. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss should we actually be concerned about inflammation or is this just another buzzword that's very popular right now and everyone's talked about. So Janelle's covered in past videos what inflammation is and things that can contribute to inflammation, things like lifestyle and nutritional choices. But today's video we're going to talk about should we actually be concerned with inflammation? Are there any diseases associated with that? Or is it just, again, another buzzword that has become really popular to talk about? So in fact, there have been diseases associated with inflammation, and as far as whether one causes the disease or the disease causes the inflammation, for some of these it's not quite clear whether it's the chicken or the egg. However, there have been a number of things that have been associated with inflammation, so let's talk about some of those right now. So first of all, heart disease. We're all familiar with heart disease. It affects a large number of people, especially women, as we go through um, menopause in particular. So heart disease definitely has been associated with inflammation. And in fact, there are markers in the blood that we can check, specifically called CRP or C-reactive protein. And there is one in particular that's a higher sensitivity C-reactive protein that just looks at cardiac um, inflammation. So that's something that's been known for some time now and conventional doctors can test that as well but that definitely is something that been, has been associated with inflammation and then tied on to that is athero, atherosclerosis sorry that's a tricky word um, and atherosclerosis is just plaques build up in the lining of the artery walls so obviously if that continues to build and it narrows your arteries more and more we can have um, clots develop and blockages and things like that, so that's why we're concerned about atherosclerosis. But basically, atherosclerosis is just an immune response to damage in the artery vessels. So what happens because of inflammation is that we get little cuts in our artery walls, and then some of our cholesterol makes its way in there, not because it's inherently evil and trying to hurt us. It's just part of the natural process of cholesterol floating through your blood. And then that sets off an immune response which causes the plaque formation. So you can see that inflammation is at the beginning of this whole process. So that starts the damage to the artery walls and then it creates this cascade which develops into atherosclerosis. So that's another condition again that's associated with inflammation. Now the next category of diseases or conditions that have been associated with inflammation are chronic pain conditions. So think of things like fibromyalgia or endometriosis, which is a female condition that is um, inflammatory and very painful. But these have both been associated with higher inflammatory markers in the body. And if you think about with pain, we have you know problem with opioids right now in this country. So it's definitely something that more and more research has been looking into as far as association with inflammation. So the next set of conditions are autoimmune conditions and inflammation. And autoimmune conditions are probably things that you've heard more and more about in recent years. They definitely seem to be on the rise and more prevalent. So an autoimmune condition is basically where the immune system is misfiring and getting confused. So our bodies basically have little flags or markers on all of our cells in our body. And that's telling our body and our immune system, hey, these cells are supposed to be here. Let's not attack these cells. Versus if we have bacteria or viruses that come in that aren't supposed to be here, they're not going to have our flags, right? So that's a signal to the body. These are enemies and they need to be attacked and destroyed and gotten rid of. So with autoimmune conditions, that same response gets confused and we're not recognizing our own flags anymore and we start attacking our own cells of our body as though they're enemies like a virus or a bacteria. So if it starts attacking our thyroid cells, that's where we get things like Hashimoto's, which is hypothyroidism. If it starts attacking cells in our joints, we get inflammation and arthritis. Or if it starts attacking things in our gut, we can get things like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. So autoimmune conditions and inflammation have definitely gone hand in hand, and there's more and more research associating those conditions together. And the next condition or concern is that inflammation has been shown to accelerate aging. So we all, you know, want to look as youthful 
um, as we can for as long as possible, but it has been shown that inflammation can accelerate that aging process, which can increase things like wrinkles and sagging of the skin. So that's just another unfortunate side effect of inflammation. And then um, some other concerns with hormones, uh, things like PCOS and again endometriosis, so more female conditions have been associated with inflammation in the body. And then the last kind of piece I want to talk about that's a little bit different is mood and brain conditions. So in the brain, we know about what's called the blood-brain barrier. So basically think of it as a wall that's protecting things from the rest of our body that shouldn't affect our brain because our brain needs to be protected, right, since it's controlling all these processes throughout our system. And we used to think this was an impenetrable wall or very minimally penetrated, but what we've now realized is that there's actually more and more things that can kind of cross that barrier, or cross that wall, and they're kind of sneaking in and causing damage. So for some conditions, especially more and more in the research lately, we've had things like depression and inflammation, inflammation excuse me, be associated with each other. Anxiety is another um, concern, even memory and things like that. So there's definitely more and more uh, association between inflammation and those conditions. And then the last brain-associated thing is insomnia. So our brain puts out hormones basically to help us fall asleep and then to help us wake up. And when we have this inflammation affecting the brain, that disrupts our circadian rhythm, which is our sleep-wake cycle. So basically, we're uh, affecting that. And insomnia is such a common condition now in America, unfortunately. A lot of people have issues with sleep. So it's another side effect, essentially, of inflammation, that it's disrupting that sleep-wake cycle and causing things like insomnia. So as you can see, we've discussed a number of conditions that affect everything from the brain to your joints, to your cardiovascular system, um, to your immune function. So there's definitely things that we should be concerned about with regards to inflammation and trying to mitigate or reduce inflammation in the body. So hopefully I didn't scare you, and if I did, don't worry, because <laughs> the next video, and our last video in the series, I'm going to talk about some practical tips and things you can do to reduce your inflammation. So I will see you at the next video, and thanks for watching.